Our scripture comes from the book of Romans, Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read verses 1 and 2 from the NIV. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Lord, add a blessing to the reading of his word. What is a living sacrifice? What is a living sacrifice? The Phillips version of the scripture reads this wise, Romans 12, 1. With eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice consecrated to him. The word sacrifice in our text presents a problem to the minds of many who are devout Christians. They look upon a sacrifice as something that is painful, something that is difficult, something that is unpleasant. Perhaps the difficulty that many have when they think of sacrifice is a result of their false concept of the nature and the purpose of our God. A proper understanding of the nature and the character of God does not come accidentally it doesn't come instantaneously. We can behold the greatness of God by studying the universe. We can discover the beauty of God by the study of flowers. I look at this bouquet uh, that we look forward to every week that's provided such variety, yet such beauty. And we can come to understand God's nature, God's character, God's purpose, only as we experience him as a loving as a loving father through faith in Jesus Christ, his unique and his divine son. We can talk it all we want to, but we must have a relationship with God and experience him through our faith in Jesus Christ. Some look upon God as being tyrannical and unconcerned about the welfare of human beings. They unjustly blame him 
for all tragedies, for all catastrophes, for all difficulties in life. This kind of an attitude toward God causes them to react negatively when they are challenged to sacrifice themselves completely into the service of God. See, words have many different shades of meaning. And uh, this is particularly true with the word sacrifice. In its verbal form, to sacrifice is to make sacred. As a noun, it can be used four different ways. Sacrifice, as a, as a noun, is an offering to a deity, to a god. It is a sacrifice. Uh, it can be a sacrifice of anything that is concentrated and offered to God or to a being of divine nature. A sacrifice is a destruction or surrender of something that is desirable in favor of a higher object. Or it is a claim deemed more pressing. A sacrifice is a loss of profit or grievous loss incurred in selling under unfavorable conditions. I was watching the news last night. And the man was fussing because someone had told him the, the value of a certain piece of property was into the thousands of dollars. And he readily bought it, held on to it for a while. And when he went to sell it, he only got a pittance of what he had paid for that profit, uh, property. I'm afraid that most Christians think in terms of the fourth definition. To hold this concept of sacrificing alone wrecks havoc with one's Christian consecration and with one's service to God. If we would realize that sacrifice does not always involve suffering, we might be able to make a more positive response to the challenge of full dedication of all that we are to the will of God. And Paul is affirming on a spiritual level that which is self-evident truth in other areas of life. He is emphasizing that success is built on sacrifice. For example, the young man who would be successful in playing football must make certain sacrifices in the area of discipline and he must put the game before his own personal safety at times. He who makes no sacrifice at this point will never be an effective football player. Successful home, successful family life is built on the sacrifices that are made by each member of the family as well as for the well-being of the group. In obtaining an education, 
A student has to make certain sacrifices in order to secure that which is most desirable. He may have to decline some invitations to social or recreational events so that he might study and excel in his chosen field. Apart from sacrifice, there is no success in any area of life. Paul is declaring that if the child of God is to become a true servant of God, he must dedicate his total being to God and consider God's will, will as being the highest possible goal. What he is saying to us is that the purpose of God for us should have top priority over all other claims. A number of things could be said concerning the nature of living sacrifice. One is that a living sacrifice is a sacrifice that is alive. In the Old Testament, we read of the animals that were offered as burnt sacrifices. These sacrifices involved death so that that which was offered as a sacrifice sacrifice was indeed the victim. We think of Jesus as one who sacrificed himself and this involved death for him. We need to recognize that his sacrifice even of his life fell under the third definition of sacrifice. Jesus deliberately chose to die so that he might have the joy of glorifying God and saving people at the same time. This was the highest goal for him. It brought greater joy than escaping the cross ever could have brought. Jesus was willing to become a dead sacrifice because he had experienced the joy of being completely dedicated as a living sacrifice. Our text does not challenge us to die for our faith. It invites us to live for our God in complete dedication to his will. Secondly, the living sacrifice is to be a holy sacrifice. Many of us are afraid of the word holy. We need not be. Positively, it means to be dedicated to. Negatively, it means to be separated from and at the same time be dedicated to. In modern terminology, it means to be completely available to the good purpose of God. The Good Samaritan illustrates what it means to be a holy sacrifice unto God. He was unable to render ministries of mercy to an unfortunate victim in a time of need. The priest and the Levite, supposedly men who were dedicated to the will of God, were not available for service in the time of need. Most of us are following in the footsteps of these men when the text would challenge us to follow 
the pattern of the Good Samaritan. The living sacrifice is a complete sacrifice. The challenge of the text is to a complete dedication of every facet of our beings into the service of God. It does not call for a fractional type of consecration. It calls for something more than Sabbath morning religion. It invites us to an acceptance of a full awareness of the stewardship nature of life. It challenges us to cooperate with God's good purpose for us in every area of life. And fourth, the living sacrifice is a joyful sacrifice. Our Savior is the good shepherd who leads his sheep. He is not a driver who compels them to go where they do not wish to go. Only those who have enough gratitude to motivate them to surrender will respond to this gracious invitation. Christian joy makes a living sacrifice possible. The Holy Father in heaven will be fully satisfied with you. He'll be satisfied with your services if you fully dedicate yourself to his will. You will experience an inward satisfaction. You will experience an inward joy that will prove to be invaluable if you will make a full response and give yourself unreservedly and unconditionally into the service of our loving Lord as he reveals his way to you from day to day. The God who so loved you that he spared not his son but delivered him up for you will not withhold anything from you if you dedicate yourself to him. You cannot outgive a God who delights to give. The more you give of yourself, the more you will be able to receive from him. God has given his son to save you from your sin. The only thing that you must give up to receive his salvation is that which is going to ruin you if you don't. God approaches you on the basis of his grace, on the basis of his mercy, so that he might bestow upon each one of us the richest gift that one can experience. And if you're willing to give to him the place that belongs to him, you can begin to know what it really means to live life, to live life on the highest plane, to live life in its richest quality. As we give our lives to Christ, as we give our lives as a living sacrifice, God grant that this would be the experience of each one of us. Shall we pray?
While the life is perplexing at times, as we look at life, our own lives, we are challenged to do more. As we do more, may we make our lives a living sacrifice. May our lives be so dedicated to you that you can use us as instruments of your love. Let those who know you not can come to know you because they see you reflected in our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.